It is January 2nd, 2017, and I'm finally having a chance to sit down with my home lab configuration here and really dive into the Samsung 960 Evo that I have VMFS formatted and used for a bit, and it works fine. Uh, I've even done some YouTube videos of cloning, and here's an unboxing, and looking at temperatures and so forth. So when I say it works fine, well, it works fine when I just install it and power up the machine and use it. I did not mess around with any BIOS settings because it was already set with UEFI on and it was all set. So here we have a month ago, someone who got the nine, uh, had a problem with the 960 Pro uh, early on. Um, right there. And then finally, just uh, yesterday, a person with the 960 Evo reported the same issue. So what I want to do is see if I can get a recording of me replicating this circumstance right on camera here. Now the machine is, you know, here, it's booted. Uh, it's got a 960 in it. It's a Xeon D1541, also known as a Bundle 2 Super Micro Super Server SYS5028D-TN4T. All right, now what am I gonna do? Well, let's start with showing you that it's working. So I've got the host client <coughs> logged right in. Host client being HTML5 user interface, giving you a look around at all the data stores that are visible. And here we are. Uh, the devices show, the 960 shows. It's not only visible, there's data on there and there's VMs on there, which I'm going to show you. So not much to see other than, yeah, it works. Now it looks like this session may have timed out. Excuse me while I get that going here. Okay, so I'm logged in. I look at storage. I can see the adapters. You don't expect to see anything other than NVMe there. It's there. And for devices, there they are. Uh, specifically, the 960 Evo, there it is, with data on it. Let me see if I can find an example. So you'll see we're on the 960 EVO. So obviously the disk is, you know, working and functional. Let's see what's on there for VMs. Okay, we've got this template here. And if we look at the hard disk that it's on, it's living on the 960. We can right click it and say new VM from this template. And let's say 960 test one. Doesn't really matter. I just want to show that the data store is quite usable and snappy. Just hit next because the 960 is already selected. We can even power down, we're done. Doesn't really matter. This is the HTML5 interface, by the way, or vSphere client is what it's called on 6.5. So we now see a clone operation happening. It even uses the word clone. So when you deploy from a template, basically you're cloning this powered off hard drive. So it doesn't have to clone any kind of memory or swap file, but it is cloning about 22 gig of data, I think is uh, how big my Windows 10 template is here. So it'll be done quite soon. And uh, again, trying to convince you that everything is just swell with this 960 Evo, that's one terabyte in size. What I'm then gonna do is shut down this host, go into the BIOS, and this data store may indeed disappear at that point. And that's what people are reporting. I move this over a little bit. can now see that the ZND1541 is showing. We're at 65%. Uh, so I have clearly labeled templates here and you can tell which physical server they are living on. And it's done. So we've now done a complete clone operation. If I head over to here, and here, and wait a little bit, we should see the console. Mm -hmm. 
And there we go. VM is running. Last piece to show health before I do the shutdown will be a quick run of ATTO. Okay, that all looks pretty normal other than the momentary dip in writes. Probably, uh, I don't know, garbage collection or something was going on there, but I, I am ready to shut down now. So actually I'll do a reboot. Nope, I want to do a shutdown. Um, well, it doesn't really matter as long as I get into the BIOS. So I'm just going to need to pay careful attention if I do a reboot. And because I have out of band, uh, visibility into the VM, sorry, the physical machine, not the VM. So what we should see here is that with the shutdown initiated, all VMs should be gracefully shutting down. There we go. And already we have ourselves this, this window, which, which is showing us the boot process of the physical server. So I'm ready to get into the BIOS and I'll go ahead and make a single, well, let's see, a simple change to the BIOS. Um, let me think about what the change will be. Something very basic. Let's go to advanced boot feature. Um, and I'll just change one option and that will be instead of four seconds, power switch now does instant off. That has nothing to do with NVMe. Now I hit F4 for save and exit and save and config, exit and, and uh, let the boot happen and come back in a few minutes when ESXi is back up and we'll see how it looks. Okay, I'm back. I'm about to look at storage. And it is gone. It simply disappeared, just as people described. So, yeah, that's bad. So, what people are telling me is the only fix is to remove power. Uh, given I have several reports, several people saying a reboot didn't help. I'm going to go ahead and trust them on that. Let me do a graceful shutdown at least. Do not torture this machine. Should shut down pretty fast. And remember we have the ability to uh, watch on the right, but we have the ability to power toggle on the left here. So... Okay. It's off, and down here we're probably going to see the word off soon. If this session is still... Authenticated. It is not. All right, power's off, but we were gonna, we want to unplug it. I'll let a few seconds go by. Obviously, power utilization dropped to zero because we've removed all power from the outlet that this particular server is plugged into. Okay, I'm going to reapply power. And as you know, we have a bit of a wait for the system to come back up. Okay, we're powered back up and looking at storage. And here's the drum roll moment. It's back. The 960 is back. And that's about it. So this problem is a thing. <laughs> uh, I've replicated 
the circumstances, uh, the actions I've taken are like the visitors to my site. I am extremely thankful for these folks taking the time to do this and to write this down. Yeah, we've got a workaround now, but not a fix. We're probably going to have to wait for the next BIOS and or IPMI uh, to deal with it. Most likely BIOS. We'll see. The product page for that system. Here's a product page. It shows tested M2 list, M.2. Notice there's no Samsung layer. So yeah, just saying it doesn't appear Samsung was tested, right? Or supported. So technically, if you open a ticket, and that's what people are also complaining about, is Supermicro says, well, that drive's not supported. Well, the 950 wasn't supported either, but it's a fantastic drive and works just great. So, yeah. Let's see what happens when we go for ESXi Samsung 950. And there we go. Serve the home, myself. We're right up there. The thing works incredibly well. So... That's it. That's a wrap for this video. Again, thanks for watching and thanks for visiting Tinkertry.com.